Hey, hey, I'm Patricia, your right share angel. In today's video, I will be talking about the pros and cons of being an employee for Uber and Lyft, if that was to happen. Now, some of you were all talking about it, that there was a judge who ruled that uh, in California that Uber and Lyft need to now uh, categorize their drivers as employees. And right now we're waiting until August 20th to see if Uber, I think Uber right now is the only one who's saying that they may leave California, they may just shut it down. I'm not for sure if Lyft is on board, but I know they're working this collectively. So, but I do hear um, Daria Kay, the owner of Uber, speaking more candidly of saying, hey, I would just, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I guess we have to wait till August 20th for that. But until then, it's a conversation and it has me thinking. So it had me thinking as a HR professional, do, path, do drivers really understand what it may look like being an employee for Uber and Lyft? Um, I know that I'm not too interested in it. Actually, I'm not interested in it at all. There's one little piece that I would say would make me a little interested, but right now, my decision would be to remain independent contractor. Now, I'm here in Texas, not to alarm anybody, is that being discussed right this moment, but I'm a forward thinker, and I know that anything that is being talked about in other major states can possibly and strongly be adopted in the state on which you live. So the three reasons on why I would not be interested in being a employee of Uber and Lyft, the first reason being, which is basically the top one for me, is the onboarding process. As I mentioned, as a human resource professional, that is one of the hardest things to get the paperwork from the employees, even though they want the job. I mean, we're talking the application, we're talking I-9 forms, we're talking W-2s, and an I-9 form has a time limit on when it even needs to be submitted, but I don't even want to go into that. However, we're talking about forms on top of forms. Currently, the onboarding process for Uber and Lyft to date would be you show a picture of your driver's license that has your name and address and everything on it, and you give them your date of birth, a little personal other information. Well, your date of birth is on your driver's license. You give them some other inf personal information, social security number and so forth, your bank information, and then you give them a copy of your registration, copy of your insurance, and a copy of your license plates. Boom. Within three days, they do like the background check. And you are already up and rolling and driving on off. No supervisor to check in with, nothing. So I like the current way on they're doing onboarding. So it'll be very interesting to see how all those forms or how they're going to navigate through that and what, you know, how they're going to figure out some way to make that happen. But I trust Uber and Lyft. I believe that they'll come up with something for it. So the second reason would be then they're going to have to categorize me or in us as full-time and part-time um and i one week i might want to be part-time the next me week i might want to be full-time again with being that flexibility being an independent contractor i can do it as i please i feel once i become an employee they're going to tighten up that rope i don't know how but i just feel they're going to tighten up their rope they're going to have to because there's certain things that's going to be required once they categorize you as full-time and part-time and the last thing is benefits. I believe this is why some of the people really wanted this um, to go forth, where Uber and Lyft are now our employee, employers, along with unemployment and so forth. But however, benefits, medical benefits, I think um, the only pro to that is if Uber and Lyft are very generous and an employer, they play a large amount of the employer piece, which then makes the premiums for the employee, either free if you're single and no children, and or family plans, they make them very low, low, you know, low premiums. Like we're not paying that much. Again, depending on which package you pick. So that is my three reasons on why I am not interested in being a employee of Uber. I would rather continue to be an independent contractor. And of course, there's so many unknowns. So we are just talking about this right now. 
as a what if, um, but we do need to continue to have this conversation about that because once again, what happens in one state can definitely happen in our state. And sometimes people tend to think the grass is greener on the other side, but I'm gonna let you know, like a friend of mine said, um, just make sure you have some extra gas to put into your lawnmower. With that being said, until next time, remember to subscribe, Give me thumbs up, comment, and click the notification bell so you can see when my next video is up, uploaded. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.